Hello, uh, Lynn. Hello. 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 Yes, we've done that. You want to speak now? Yeah. What oh, I want to know is the other way you asked if um, you're training from if you got your training from direct inquiries. If so, do you think that direct inquiries are that bad? I thought he really ring director inquiries. Uh, it wasn't me that made the suggestion. Do you think directory inquiries are that bad? No, I don't really. I think they give an efficient service. Oh, I see. How, how long have you worked for them, Lynn? Quite a while, actually. I rather thought you might be working there. It seems to me, Lynn, that your opinion is tinted by the fact that you're one of them. Isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, we can hardly, we can hardly qualify you as an independent observer of their service. Yeah, but I think they give quite a good service, actually. But they do tend to be a bit grumpy on occasions. Yeah, but then again, you can understand... Uh, well, can I understand too. it? I'm paid to be grumpy. They're paid to give a service. Have they got the right to be grumpy? No, but they do give a service. Yes, they do. But you seem to have no argument against the fact that they are sometimes grumpy. Are they grumpy? Sorry, say that again. I said to you, that they are sometimes grumpy. You didn't say no, they're not. You tried to tell me why they were. No, I can admit sometimes, probably, but then again, it's the pressures. Oh, what a shame. I still own up to the fact that they do give a very good service. Well, yes, you're bound to own up to that, but I'd rather hear you own up to them being grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> now then, what we've got to ask is when the poor unsuspecting subscriber dials 192, to, uh, has he, has he or she, yeah, I do, got yeah. to expect you to be grumpy? Have you not got the same service to offer to that person as you offered to the earlier call? Well, probably sometimes we are grumpy, but then again, the next call probably we do give the better service. But what about the poor soul that rings you up and gets a telephonist who's grumpy? What about them? Are they not entitled to a non-grumpy telephonist? Yeah, they're entitled to Well, they yeah. don't get one, it seems. Then again, they might just took the wrong side as well. But, Lynn, now you're trying to say that they're not grumpy. You've already conceded that they are sometimes grumpy. Yeah. Now that we've established that they are grumpy, let us not backtrack and try and find a way out of it. Let us try and find a way of stopping them being grumpy. Hmm? Seems we've outmanoeuvred you, Lynn. Have you ever been round the uh, telephone exchange in Preston? No, I haven't. To see the other side of this door? Uh, no, I haven't. No. Why don't you come? What for? To see how the other side works. I see. Will that explain to me why you're all grumpy? No, it wouldn't, but it would show you the other side of how we work. Well, you write and invite me, and I'll be more than happy to come along and we watch you grumpy you. away. We don't have to invite you. We invite... Well, we don't have to write to you. You're welcome to come any time. You have to write to me for me to come. <laughs> All right. We have to. You have to for me to come, yes. Well, I'll do that for you, Alan. What a, what a gracious soul. Lynn, you weren't grumpy this evening. All right. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> Malcolm, of course you can. What do you want? Malcolm, do you want anything? Uh, hello, Mr. Pezzy. Yes, I yes, was yes. on a Thursday, and uh, you said you'd try and find me a Geordie, have you? Try and find you a what? A Geordie. A Geordie? Yeah, we were talking like... No, I, I've, I've taken a tape recording of your voice to Newcastle this very weekend, and I played it to 25 women, all of whom were sick. Sick? Sick. I don't know why, it's a phenomenon. Every time anyone hears you, they seem to chuck up, well, so we're going to save... Middlesbrough. I'm sorry? For anyone from Middlesbrough, there's not for sea life. Well, obviously you're not foreseen. In your position, you can't oh, afford to be. Not about a cockney, though. I wouldn't want a cockney. No, you wouldn't want a cockney, I'm no. Your wife, though. Well, I'm sure you have. Once again, John Wilding makes choosing and driving away a new or used quality car easier than ever before. At Ocean Garage Blackpool, John's offering the most tempting deals on the whole Toyota range. And on display at his Five Ways Garage, Devonshire Road, Bispam, an unrivaled selection of quality used cars, all backed by a no-quibble 12-month warranty. And there's full service and repair facilities. So whether you decide on a new or nearly new car, make sure you decide on John Wilding. When you think about cars, it pays to think of John Hi, Mike Tunstall here, 
Have you got your tickets for the Great Country Music Show at the Charter Theatre in Preston on Saturday the 24th of August? Six of the top northern country bands are giving their services free and all the proceeds are going to Sally Moon's Heartbeat Appeal. If you've never heard country music live before, I promise you'll enjoy yourself and you'll be supporting a great charity drive. I hope I'll see you at the Charter Theatre on the 24th of August. Old or new country fans, get your tickets now at the Guildhall box office or here at Red Rose Radio or at Dave and Jean's Country Store, 109 Bond Street in Blackpool. The tickets are going very nicely, so don't miss out on this one. Shouldn't hold your breath waiting for me to arrive, Mike. Out of to Nick. to Tony. All right, Tony. Yes, I'm all right. What do you want? Yeah, listen, you just want to know why you're a bore, like. I've no idea why I'm a bore. I'm more concerned at why you're listening to me. Well, we don't, we just... Why are you spending all this money telephoning yeah. me all the way from that den of iniquity called Liverpool to ask yeah. me such a stupid question? Is it because you are a total, utter buffoon? Yes. Goodbye. Get off. Go and be bored by someone for far less money. It is now time for th news. Radio. Midnight news, this is Alan King. Perhaps the kids would have never got on the planes if MFI, MFI, my apologies, MI5, <laughs> if MI5 spent less time at the BBC and more time at the dumb airports, my apologies to MFI. <laughs> school blouses look alike. But before you buy, ask yourself what they look like after reenactments of Wonder Woman, hours of skipping, and a lot of washing. Well, if they're from Littlewood stores, they'll look just fine, because from $2.99, you can't buy better quality and durability. And that's the Littlewood's promise. We're going back to school. We're charging. We're going back. Phone Liverpool 920 for written credit details. It's back to school time again and at John Menzies we've got a bigger than ever back to school range with lots of special offers like a Casio solar powered calculator for only $4.99, a tub of 30 fibre pens for $1.59, a range of school satchels from as little as $3.49 up to $10.99 and a Parker 25 stainless steel ball pen for just £5.50. So, before you pack the kids off to school, pack them off to John Menzies. John Menzies at Cleveland's Preston, Wigan and Barrow. Instagram, the only way to send a greetings message. It's fast, it's fun, it's friendly. It's Instagram. Phone Bolton 395-440. Bolton 395-440. Five past twelve, we're here till two. O double seven two five six one thousand to join us. If you want to buy a cupboard, ring the special branch. How do Dave? Uh, uh, can you send that Malcolm round to me? I have to clean up the mess. I just puked up over the floor after eating it. It's fully understandable. Thank you very much. Hello, John. What? Uh, do you know Brookside? Do I know it? Yeah. Well, do you know you said... Not intimately. Pardon? Not intimately. I don't know it intimately. All right, then. Do you know you never recorded it? Yes, I do know. I, I was oh. telling people earlier, so I must know, mustn't I, really? Damon, we're arguing with Harry Crossy's... Harry Cross. Yes, yes. And Harry Ed Cross is Harry Cross. Yeah, Has Harry Cross got an Harry Cross of his own? I don't know. I've is it a little and a big one? I don't know. I've never looked. I see. Very good, yes. And, uh You go and have a lie down, John. You don't sound well, lad. How do Kelly? Hello, Alan. I wonder if you could give me some advice. It's... My next door neighbour, she's got a pedigree Yorkshire Terrier. And I've got a mongrel, a Jack Russell. And one day, her uh, dog was on heat, and my dog got out, and they mated. Now this woman is charging £15 for the puppies, and she refuses to give me a stud fee. What can I do about it? Absolutely nothing. Why? Uh, well, I've got really think this is fair. Well, you didn't ask me to tell you what was fair. 
<laughs> you asked me to tell you what you could do about it? The answer's nothing. Fairness belongs in another world, not this one. Hello, Dave. Oh, Alan, you sound a bit wheezy tonight. Have you got a bad shot? Wheezy? Do I really sound wheezy? Yeah, that's very nice of you to be concerned. Uh, no, I didn't think I had a bad chest. Oh, actually, we were there on the pier and we had a bet on us to whether you'd have a floater wheel like a balloon or a float to the bottom like a stone. <laughs> yes, well, I did both of those things uh, in reverse order. I went to the bottom, come up again, much to everybody's dismay, and then floated away like a balloon. Yeah, it And those like... swangs on the rescue boats wouldn't pick me up. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. You're going to float to the bottom as well afterwards. Yes, it did. I, I, I was feeling... I was feeling as if it wouldn't have bothered me one dot if I had, I tell you. Yeah, uh, also, I like your trunks, I thought you were very kinky, the blue. Very kinky trunks, those. Blue kinky trunks. Ones. Looking after the wedding tackle, you know. <laughs> you got to protect the wedding tackle. Yeah. I was going to wear a cricket box like I used to do when I was a kid, and women used to follow me home when I was a kid, you know, because I always wore a cricket box in the baths. And there's yeah. a lot of disappointed women in our street, I'll tell you. <laughs> but that's another story, all right? <laughs> So I don't think it would have gone down too well on uh, Sunday, anyway. I don't think it would have done, no, no. Of course, anyway. Cheers. <laughs> Ta-ra. Cheers. I'll do to Jamie. Hello, Alan. Yes. I was listening to you last week. You were discussing about uh, the generation of Americans today, not the same as they were several hundred years ago. Do you remember that from Thursday? Yes. And after that came the discussion of uh, mass murder of the Jews by the Germans during World War II and also the mass murder of the Japanese by the British during World War II. Out of that, am I to assume that you are against mass murder altogether? Yes. Then how could you possibly condone the machine gunning of hippies? One can't, really. Well, you did earlier on, about ten minutes ago. Yes, but if you're going to take every word I say as read, then you're either very stupid or very immature. Which is it? Well, no, well, don't you think that the... Um, I don't think. Violence, I've already said what I say. It's mindless um, use of violence. You're discussing... It's mindless use of violence, if indeed I was in favour of it, I am not, although that is what I said as a, a banal jest. Well, it's exactly what it is, it is banal. But the programme's banal, Jamie. I don't understand why you're listening to it. I'm listening to it because I find it quite interesting to listen to other people, but... Well, excellent. Well, unfortunately, those other people have got to come here via me. That's true, yes. Yes, well, you'll just have to make do, kid. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Oh, by the way. Uh, yes. I am from Liverpool. I don't consider myself... Ah, but you don't sound like a scout. And if no. you remember, what I said was, everyone that could... Because you are the one for being pedantic, let's face it. If somebody comes on this phone and sound like a scouser, they usually turn out to be thick. Well, I, I've heard an awful lot of uh, Lancashire people who sound equally stupid. Yes, well, I wasn't making remarks. I didn't actually suggest that Liverpool, Liverpool people were thick. Indeed, if you were listening attentively, you would have discovered that I actually said that I don't think Liverpool people are thick. Oh, but okay. we cannot escape the fact that I, I everyone... I also wouldn't call it a den of iniquity either. I'm sure you wouldn't call it a den of iniquity, I'm sure but... I'm quite proud of where we live. I'm sure you are. Where do you live? I live in Liverpool. Yes, it's a large place. Well, I'm not prepared to discuss it any further. In that case, get off. And that way you don't have to. Hello, John. Hello. Hello, Alan. Uh, what I want to ring you about is nuclear disarmament again. Now, the thing about it is that whilst I broadly agree with your ideas, when Thatcher went into the last general election, she went into it with an economic record that should have been impossible to defend. Unfortunately, the uh, Labour Party at that time were committed to nuclear disarmament which is, unfortunately, an electoral loser. Now, I think that people who uh, actually believe in nuclear disarmament should, um, for the point of view of going to the electorate, uh, say that um, they should look at uh, Trident and look at the health service and, uh, you know, the underfunding and everything, and uh, just say there should be a uh, reappraisal of priorities and get on from there. I can't really see a government getting elected in this country having as its manifesto a reappraisal of priorities. Well, they usually do, don't they? I mean, um, whoever's the most woolly and appeals to the worst instincts in the electorate usually get in. <laughs> and you, have you actually said anything, John? Because I've just been listening to you and I can't actually work out what you've said. What I've said is that all, the point is that Thatcher... Uh, you know, um... Yes, I understood that bit. It was after that that we got lost. You mean, you're suggesting that Thatcher was elected, or at least the Conservative government were elected, because of their nuclear policies, or the nuclear power, yeah. nuclear weaponry policies. I'm convinced that most people in this country just don't want to know about nuclear disarmament. John, 
Will you please tell me whether that is the answer to the question, or whether the question is answered yes or no? Do you, are you maintaining that this government was elected merely on a ticket of nuclear defence? Mainly, yeah. Mainly. mainly. Was yeah, this that, and, that and law and order, of course. Law and order. And I mean anybody who... Well, we've all seen what's happened to law and order. Well, anybody we? who likes a government on the, on the law and order platforms giving a mandate for police state anyway. And I mean, John, off now with John you're people. not even talking sense at the moment. You're jumping from one subject to another well, with very that. little... Very well, you little expert. You? You no, what I tried to ask you to I'm do, John. Yeah. What I tried to ask you to do, but failed miserably, was to answer the question yes or no whether this government was elected merely on a mandate of nuclear defence, as you seem to indicate. Well, I think they mainly were. Yes. Right. Why do you think that? Because I'm convinced that the majority of people, however misguidedly, uh, fear that uh, we're going to be left without defence. Are you telling me that nuclear weapons were an issue in the last election? I, I'm definitely saying it was, yeah. Was it? Because the... What was the Labour Party policy on nuclear weapons in the last election. Well, they knew that Fock was a committed nuclear disarmer. Yes, I didn't ask period. you that. I asked you what was the Labour Party manifesto statement on it. Well, they said they were going to get rid of him. Right. Now, what was the Liberal Alliance manifesto on it? Well, um, I seldom understand their policies anyway. That wasn't the question. You're making statements that the majority of the population did thus, and you don't even understand the mandate of a political party, or at least two political parties. The Alliance were also in favour of the retention of nuclear weapons and did abysmally, I mean, well by their standards, but abysmally in the last elections. Yeah. Do you remember? I do remember, yeah. And uh, I think that the Alliance uh, did abysmally because people um, don't naturally trust turncoats, people who turn away from their own, uh, you know, for uh, career reasons. But if that was the case, we wouldn't have a Labour Party. <coughs> uh, I don't follow that at all, actually. Well, go and get a history book, study it, you'll find that the Labour Party didn't exist at the beginning of this century, and came, obviously, from other parties. It must have done. Given that the population was divided into two parties, and a third party was created, the Labour Party. Yeah. But so someone must have turned coat yeah, somewhere well, along the line to not, create the Labour Party. Not really. It was not really. So it we was have only that the, they became the unions as a political force to finance people. Uh, that but is also party, true. But the Labour Party, as a political entity, came out of two other parties. There were two parties in existence: one called Liberals, one called Labour. Uh, sorry, one called Conservative, and another party came into being called the Labour Party. Some people must have turned coat in order to elect a Labour government at some stage, must they not? Well, we, uh, electors, definitely, yeah. So your statement that people do not like turncoats is a little misguided at best? Well, I, I don't, uh, no, I don't think uh, that is so. Yeah, I see. So what you're saying is that everybody wants nuclear weapons, nobody wants anyone that's ever voted something that they're not voting now. I think you're talking nonsense, to be honest. <laughs> Utter nonsense. Yeah, well, you know, I thought you would say that, but I mean, I ask people who um, who are committed nuclear disarmament to consider the long-term route to their objectives. Or mm, what is the long-term route they... of their objectives? Yeah, well... To what is the long-term route of their objectives? To, uh, first of all, go for something small. Excuse me, John. Just uh, Excuse me, John, can we just establish... You said you want them to consider the long-term route which yeah. I find extraordinary, of their objectives. Now, will you tell me what the long-term objective is of nuclear disarmers? Just begin by getting... No, that is telling me what you want them to do, John. Can we first of all establish what you want them, or what process, or why they have to do what you want them to do? What is their long-term objective, John? It's not a difficult question no, for anybody else. It no, be, I'll complete nuclear disarmament. Right. Now, why are they going about it the wrong way, which seems to be what you're implying? By going in for it, um, is one thing, straight away. But that is, uh, excuse me, John, that is not the policy uh, of the campaign for nuclear disarmament. No, I agree. I don't understand, John. You're telling 
those who are interested in nuclear disarmament not to go for multilateral disarmament, but to concentrate first of all on something less than that. Yeah. They are doing, John. You think they are? Are you a member of CND, John? Well, I was a lot of years ago in the 19... John, do you ever answer any questions, yes or no? Uh, no, I don't think I... I well, I'm not a member at the moment, but I used to be. John, do you ever ask, answer the question you're asked? Yeah, 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 sometimes. Well, could, could this be one of the occasions when you do? Yeah. Right. Do you understand the policies of CND? Uh, I think I do. Are you aware of those policies? Yeah. Would you like to explain them to me? What is... Ultimately... Uh, no, we've already asked that question, John. It, I know it was a good minute ago and you may have forgotten it, but I've already asked you that. Yeah. It's the, um... It's to get rid of nuclear weapons. Oh, yes, John, we're aware of that. You're, yeah. you're asking them to change their policies and yet you're not aware of what their policies are, are you, John? Well, yeah, you know, I, but I mean... Well, why won't you tell me what they are, John? The policies fill a full volume, don't they? Well, would you like to tell me just one of them, John, apart from their ultimate objective of doing away with nuclear weapons? One of their current policies? Nothing to educate people to Yes. Me. That's... Okay, we'll accept that. Yeah. What are they... What main thing are they trying to do at this moment? I think to draw people's attention to... <laughs> Cruise missiles don't seem to figure in any of your answers, John. Well, obvious, well, cruise missiles, I mean, obviously, uh, they, they aren't even any good for the purpose for which they've intended, but, you know... Yeah, I mean, John, we're talking about tactics now, John. Yeah. Now, will you tell me, first of all, what the CND policy is on cruise missiles? Not to have them in the country. And what are they doing at this moment, John? They're protesting. Yes. Now, then. Let me ask you a question, because you did ask them to consider their a route to their long-term objective. Yeah. Do you consider this protest to be a sensible journey or a sensible staging point on this route or not? Well, I don't believe that they're getting through to the people. They should be getting Can I ask you the question there. again, John? We did agree a little earlier, not much earlier, that you would answer the question that you were yeah. asked. Yeah. So I'll ask it you again, because you obviously didn't well, understand it. It's yeah. very difficult talking to someone who's a bit simple, but I'll try. Yeah. Now then, John, do you think the current campaign by nuclear, the CND group, to do away with cruise missiles and to get them removed from our soil is a good course of action or a bad course of action? A good course of action. I see. Well, will you tell me what CND is currently doing that you would like them not to do? Because you've asked them to reconsider their route to their objective and you agree with the first step on that route, so I, I'm, I'm flummoxed, to be fair, John. Will you tell me what they're doing at the moment that you think they should not be doing? Well, I, I think the type of protest that they're, uh, they're indulging in is, um, is a bit pointless and thrilling. Now, which one of those types, because there are many, many types, which one is it you're against? Well, I mean these, uh, these sort of uh, sit-ins around nuclear bases and camping out there. Now, why is that not working, John? Why is, why is that a, a wrong course? Well, it's not doing... It's not actually... I, I can't see how it's doing a lot of good. Because, um, you know, the people who... Um, I think what they should be indulged more in is, um, is educating people. How would they go about that, John? By getting through to people that if we didn't have nuclear weapons, we wouldn't be in any danger. Um, what process would they use to get through to people, John? Um, they'd... Well, I, I think the, uh, the pamphlets could be more widely distributed. Yes. Would you read it, John? Yeah. Do you I think the majority of people would, John? I think they should have more influence in workplaces and places like this. Oh, you think we should have CND in workplaces now? Yeah. How many employees are going to permit that, John? Um, well, I think the unions would be quite receptive. Why should the unions be forced to take on CND? The union's job isn't political, they tell us that all the time. The union's job is to fight for the rights of their members, <laughs> nothing else. Yeah, well, I mean, um, 
if, if you're naive enough to believe that, yeah. No, it isn't a case of naive enough to believe it, John. I don't think it is the responsibility of CND to go into people's workplaces and try to ram their CND policies down there. I do actually think that they would love to. Yeah. Love to. Unfortunately, people are not receptive. People in this country, and we've had a caller evident of it tonight, people in this country are aware that there are nasty things going on in our society, but they're happy to turn a blind eye. We had a caller tonight saying that they shouldn't show pictures of geriatrics on television because it's unfair to geriatrics. Yeah. But basically what they were saying was it makes them feel uncomfortable. People don't want uncomfortable facts thrown at them. They want them brushed under the table, John. What CND is doing at Greenham and at other places is making the public aware that these things exist, that they haven't gone away, that they are still there, and that in actual fact, at least once a month, a cruise missile launcher leaves its site in Greenham Common and moves about on Salisbury Plain. Now, to the British Army, and, well, why am I saying British? It's a lot of yanks. To the American Army, that is not a threat. But if I was sitting in Moscow and I saw on my information sheet, because you can rest assured the Russians know about it, if I saw that a cruise missile launcher had moved from its base to a place where it is able to attack my country, I would be worried. Now, I think the British public have got a right to know that. Well, if I was sitting in The Yanks aren't going to tell them. If the I British government aren't going to tell them. And indeed, the British government are trying to imprison people that take the trouble to tell them. Well, if I was sitting in Moscow, no, I'd be laughing at the time it takes to get from where it is to where it's supposed to be launched anyway. John, I'm sure you would. But that doesn't, doesn't in any way convince me that what they're doing at Greenham and Conham is wrong. Because if they weren't there protesting, you wouldn't know it was happening. Yeah, I mean, in the 1960s, you're speaking to someone. John, we're not in the 1960s. I have no interest any longer That's in the 1960s. I don't care what you're saying about you're the speaking. 1960s, John. We're talking about now. Yeah. The fact is that if those people, those women, were not at Greenham Common, you would not be aware of what was going on. Because nobody else would tell you, John. All right? Well, uh, yeah, I'll take that for what it is, but, you know... It's a I fact. Don't... That's what you'll take it for. Out to Pat. Hello? Patton. Hello, John. Hello. No, I'm not John. I'm Alan. John's Alan, gone. yeah. You're uh, going soon as well. What do you want? I'd like to ask you what you think of fat people. I think they're lovely, particularly if they've got red hair and they're called Alan Bezik. Drop dead. What do you want, Paul? Oh, well, Alan. Uh, I've up a bit bikes on the road. Bikes on the road? Yeah. Where would you like to have them? Uh, well, uh, off the road. Off uh, the road? Yeah. To where? On the footpath to run down blind people? No, no, I don't... In the sky? No, I don't think it's safe them to ride on the road. What would you have us do with the cyclists then? You're not allowing them on the footpath, you're not allowing them on the road? How would people get to work? I'd like lay-bys outside the road for them. On lay-bys? Yes. Lay-bys don't go anywhere? Yeah, I don't believe they made... They made lay-bys don't go anywhere? If they made a lay-by like a road, they made a lay-by go somewhere, wouldn't they? And who's going to pay for all this? The council. The council, who yeah. are rolling in money, of course. They can't even maintain the roads at the moment, Paul. I know, I know the roads are really bad, you know. Yeah, well, why do you think they're bad, Paul? Well, uh, you know, I, I'm a driver, I can... Yes, I'm not uh, interested in what you do, Joel, Paul. Uh, the fact is, Paul, that the roads are in an appalling state, yeah. correct? Correct. Yeah. Now, do you really think that the council, who can't afford to maintain the roads, are actually going to spend all their time building cycleways? No. 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 But, so uh, what are we going to do with the cycles in the meantime, Paul? You don't want them on the roads. We can't afford to build a cycle wage. Where are you going to have them put? Well, can cyclists not take a test before they go on the road? You I'm know, sure they I mean, can, uh, yes. Uh, the, uh, so, well, well, Paul, yeah. you've changed your tack, haven't you? You're not saying now they shouldn't be on the road. You're saying they should take a test. Now, which of those statements are you happy to have as your... Well, we'll uh, take the test first before they go on the road. So you yeah. don't want cycles removing from the road? I don't want them removing, yeah. I see. But, Paul, uh, Paul, yeah. when you came on, you did. Yeah. Why don't you now? Well, you know, like the... Uh, Why don't you now, Paul? I don't when know. When you came on, you did. Yeah. Now you don't. Yeah. Are you so easily persuaded? No. You were. No. You've changed your mind since you came on, Paul. Yeah. No. So you were easily persuaded. It yeah, took me about ten seconds. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say, Alan, is... Paul, what you did say was that you want cyclists off the road. Yeah. In ten seconds, I convinced you that you don't. Yeah. 
Do you think I'm really going to spend much more of my time talking to you no. when the policies you've got in your mind and the ideas you've got in your mind will take me merely ten seconds to turn around? No. Paul, go away, think, grow up, ring me back. Hello, Dave. Hello, Alex. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about uh, dinosaurs. <laughs> go on. Well, I've been studying them for several years and uh, I wonder whether your listeners might be interested in what I've got to say about them. Other than they're all dead? Well, apart from that. Then go on. Uh, well, I think that uh, the most interesting of the dinosaurs is the Brontosaurus. Yeah. Uh, apart from anything else, it's thin at one, one end, fat in the middle, and thin at the other. Got it? Well, what's one for seven years, study? Not a lot. It's pita bread sandwiches to you. Because they're thin at one end, fat in the middle, and thin at the other. Thank you very much, Dave. Go back to your studies, ring me in seven years, and we'll find out why they're thin at one end, perhaps. Stuart, hello. Hello, Alan. I'd like to ask, I'd like to ask you why you have the caller's voice is so low. It's the equipment, I'm afraid. It's all very complicated to explain, and in actual fact... Well, the as a matter of fact, I do happen to be in the train, and... Well, and explain really it to me, then. Well, it doesn't... It, it can be hired. Hired? Well, the voice, the volume powerful. can be. You mean the volume can be increased? I thought you were in the trade. You don't know much jargon, do you? It can be hired. Well, it can, it can be increased then. Very good. Well, this volume setting that is available to me is currently at maximum. Well, I was, I was just wondering. That now, if we, I well, I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah. This volume setting, as I have it at the moment, is at maximum at this moment. Now, if we boost it. Yeah. What that does is it will amplify the signal yeah. coming from you to me. Yeah. But it will also amplify the signal going from me to you and returning. We will therefore get something called howl round or feedback. Yeah. Well, you can, as a matter of fact, have a separator. We can have a separator, but for yeah. that we would have to operate two lines. Yeah, yeah. Because I have to talk to you. And that so costs you'll... money, yeah. Well, it's not a case of money. You haven't got two phones, have you? No. Well, well, you'd have to have, wouldn't you? You'd have to have one for me to talk to you on, and the other one for you to talk to me. You can't separate my voice from yours once it comes back up the line. Yours comes up as the main voice, but mine comes up as a lower voice underneath yours, which is the return feed. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. I appreciate that now. Well, yeah. If you're in the trade, you should have appreciated it before and not bothered me. Na -na 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 -na. 18 minutes past the big hour of 1 o'clock on wonderful Radio Malibu. You're back with Rocky Shaw, folks, and today I'm feeling a little irate. Ah, Jim, I said irate, not pirate. Oh, don't those tropical storms put a damper on the beach parties. However, Rocky has the answer. Time to mix a cocktail or two. Here a wonderful Malibu. Okay, folks, get out of those wet clothes and into a dry Malibu. Take a tall, ice-filled glass, pour in some Malibu, then top up with dry vermouth, and that's a Malibu dry. Ah, lad, I could just drink Malibu dry. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Malibu, it comes from paradise and tastes like heaven. This commercial features a man who speaks and a dog who says half. Sit. Don't do that. Right then, I would now like to explain to you the advantages of a young person's rail card. If you're between 16 and 23 years old, travelling by train needn't cost... Well, go on then. Travelling by train needn't cost... Half! Very good. As much as you think. For a measly 12 quid, a young person's rail card lets you travel... Half! Price on lots of trains. And you can now use it to buy a saver ticket and go for less than... Half! The standard fare. You can even get Arf! price cheap day returns. Arf! Arf! He's good, isn't he? So, if you've only seen Arf! the country, now you can see the other. Arf! In fact, with a young person's rail card, you too could be a rover. <coughs> oh, come on, it's not that bad. British Rail. Arf! He's getting there. He's getting there. <laughs> How do you, Ian? Hello, Alan. Hello. Earlier... In the programme, you made a statement that you thought the Russians were not expansionist. I didn't actually say that. If you'd have listened carefully, you would have heard me say they are even the Russians are not that expansionist. Mm -hmm. um, that's a different statement. I, did, uh, I didn't understand from what you were saying that uh, that was the that was the point you were making. I'm not over bothered whether you understood or not. That was what I said. You did actually say that uh, why had Russia not attacked Australia because they never had any uh, 
Indeed, but prior to that, I'd said, why didn't they attack China? Because Russia was actually involved in all kinds of border skirmishes with China at a time prior to China having nuclear weapons. Uh, I would like to suggest that one of the reasons why Russia has not attacked China, or especially somewhere like Australia, is because the whole concept of uh, the, the Russian people, certainly the Russian government, is to make convince everybody that they are really a friendly nation that would not invade anybody. And uh, I'm quite sure if they invaded Australia, the rest of the Commonwealth countries would retaliate against Russia anyway. The people if they'd invaded, invaded China, they wouldn't. Uh, I, I still think that same as China. Not only I'm quite sure Austra uh, uh, Russia scared of China with the power they have with conventional weapons, but also the fact that if if they did invade anything such as China. Uh, basically world opinion would be held against them immediately. And they're really bothered about world opinion, aren't they? That's why they're not in Afghanistan. Well, this is one point I was going to say. Uh, well, world opinion isn't worth a light to the Russians. They're not bothered a dot by world opinion, are they? They've, exactly. invi they've yeah, invaded exactly. Afghanistan. So yeah. how... I'm sorry. Yeah. You are going to use world opinion now and say yeah. that world opinion is against them from in invading Afghanistan. If it didn't stop them from invading there, why did it stop them from invading China? Uh, I would, I would say that, uh, when it comes to people like, uh, or places like Afghanistan, where they feel that, uh, they may be losing parts of, uh, what they would like to see as their, uh, as their expanded nation, that they would go in and, whatever the world opinion is, and go in and get, uh, places like Af Afghanistan or Czechia. So England's safe, is it? Uh, it certainly is while we've got nuclear weapons to defend ourselves. I see. That's Just it. a moment. Yeah. I don't understand the logistics of this. What? Because the only argument you've given me for them not invading Japan so far is world opinion, which China. Peyton, uh, sorry, I don't know why I said Japan, because I'm thick probably, but China, is world opinion. World opinion didn't stop them going into Afghanistan. And yet the only reason they don't invade Britain, according to you, is that we've got nuclear weapons. But Japan, sorry, why am I saying Japan? But China hasn't got nuclear weapons. We well, seem to have got sidetracked here, and you've got two different... the reasons, uh, I see. would be possibly... Uh, would be possibly. You're really positive about your opinions, aren't you? Would be positively. No, the, it's, I'm saying it would be possibly as far as Russia. I'm Ian, let me tell you why the let me tell you why the Russians exactly what Russia will decide. Let I'm me tell you, opinion. without any argument at all, yeah. why the Russians invaded Afghanistan and why they're going to invade Pakistan when all the Afghanistan has died down in 25 years' time, mm -hmm. and that is because they want a warm water port. Very I haven't got one. Uh, I, th I think the whole point of this is you s you seem to be I don't know you seem to have the opinion that basically uh, nuclear weapons should be taken out from Britain uh, or any other countries. I believe that nuclear weapons should not exist. Right. And do you, do you agree that, uh, or would you say that there is actually a possibility of taking uh, nuclear weapons, for instance, out of Great Britain? Or the answer to that, it, it depends on what you mean by possibility. It is obviously possible. It only needs enough of the people to say so. However, if you mean... Is it likely to happen? Is no, it possible in that sense? It's not likely to happen. I've already said this evening for at least ten generations. I agree, it's not likely. But possibly, the answer is yes, it is definitely possible. Well, what, I, what I'm saying is this, that I believe that if nuclear weapons were taken away from Britain and friendly Western countries... When friendly to whom? To ourselves, such as America, such as Australia, such as... Uh, They're not in Australia. Who are? Nuclear weapons? No, but um, you said friendly countries. I'm talking about the Western powers. I see. Well, you said taken out of friendly Western countries. They can't take them out of Australia. No, They're no, not sorry, in. We'll go on. No, no, I wasn't saying. I was saying we. The, you asked me about the who I thought yeah. were friendly. Very good. Those type of people. Um, I would say that if, for instance, Great Britain disarmed, when uh, something such as the Falklands, which I believe, even though. It was something that uh, I wouldn't like to see happen again as far as our sh soldiers killed. But in situations like that, I believe it's very important for Great Britain to stick up 
for the country. Which What's this got to do with nuclear weapons? Nuclear weapons because weren't used in the Falklands. This, uh, you will get powers such as the Argentinians who will, if they want, use their power to either destroy or to take over a nation. Stuart, this may have... Uh, Russia is expansionist. They yes. will... Ian? Yeah. Ian, despite the existence of nuclear weapons, yeah. Argentina invaded that country. Very true. So your yeah. argument that nuclear weapons stop people invading is, on your own evidence, bunkum. No. Uh, I see. The then, reason why... Well, let me ask you a question. Yes. A very simple question. Yes. You take as long as you like to answer, but at the end of the day, I want a yes or a no. Right. Did Argentina invade British territory? Yes. I'll ask you another question. Did Britain at that time have nuclear weapons? Yes. Now, this third question may seem stupid, but I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask it. Did nuclear weapons prevent British territory being invaded? No. They're not so bloody clever, are they? Uh, now, that's, that was quite an interesting point that you brought up, but it does not take away the fact that the original reason for ringing up was because I did believe that your point was that our, your question to somebody was, is Ian, Russia really expanding this, which I said they are? I also suggested that nuclear, pa uh, nuclear weapons were something that I think Great Britain needs and other countries. Uh, I used a point about the, for instance, the Falklands War, not to say that uh, that was a reason for keeping nuclear weapons because of the Falklands. What I was trying to point out was that there are countries such as Argentina and there are powers, uh, there, were, there are people such as, for, for instance, Ayatollah Khomeini or um, other, other people like him who you would call uh, maniacs. Uh, our men, for instance, who will and can, and Russia, uh, the Russian... Can you tell me, you just finish it, before you start your new sentences, finish the old ones. Who will and can. I was going to continue with the sentence. Well, uh, you can't do your list of countries, say and who will and can, and then add Russia. Tell me what you were going to say. All right. People such as that, who will and can, if they have nuclear weapons, which is quite easy, such as Castro and Cuba, for instance. Um, yes, you're adding to the list again. You're right. Uh, yes, will you tell me what they will and can do, please, and we'll, we'll and talk about the list of countries afterwards. They will and can destroy or take over countries or peoples who they feel right. would do them Right. Uh, now, let me just economy. ask you a very simple question, Ian. Yes, go on. If every nuclear weapon currently in existence yes. on this globe mm. was disarmed and dismantled yes. and the registered knowledge to make them mm. was also destroyed so that only human beings had that knowledge because there are very few few human beings that hatch actually have within their brain the ability to make a nuclear weapon it yes. takes a lot of people mm. now if that was done away with do you think any of these Tim pot regimes would be able to get hold of one. That is, is very hypothetical in that... We have I talked hypothesis. The only time we've talked fact in this conversation, Ian, you've lost. We talked we talk fact... What, what we lost on, on well, that? I'll tell you, we talked fact that the non-existence of nuclear weapons didn't encourage Russia to invade China. We talked on fact that the existence of nuclear weapons did not deter Argentina from invading British soil. Those are two things well, where your arguments fail. Britain. Now, can we come back to these tin pot people and will you please tell me how they're going to invade with nuclear weapons if none are in existence? Uh, to answer, to try and answer three of the questions. Number one, as far as the facts were concerned, that was a fact you brought up uh, before about uh, nuclear weapons. Can you stick to the point we're running out of time, or at least right. you are? As fast as I can. Uh, I would say this, that uh, the reason why I said it was hypothetical, because never will countries such as Russia disarm, however much uh, detente is shouted from the West, especially through people such as CND, it will get nowhere except help the Russians, I believe, because the whole point I was saying before is there will be people who want to take over the world and want to take over certain countries if 
people such as us lay down our arms, people such as the people in the Falklands will be overrun, will be taken over. We must protect people such as that, and as far as nuclear weapons are concerned, there may be, and I'm quite sure there is, one day there will be a time, such as the Bay of Pigs uh, with Cuba, where it's a case of, we've got, talking about uh, Russia for instance, we've got nuclear weapons, what are you going to do about it? And from Brit Great Britain's side, we will say, try it, because if you try and blast us out of the waters, we will do the same to you. If we have no weapons, then it is too easily possible Ian, for them to say what are you going to do about it. graves are full of people who died in the Falklands. You have just cheapened those deaths, but thank you for joining us. Thank you. We shall talk to Phil quite soon. Hello, Phil. Hello. Um, I'd just like to ask you if you agree with... Phil, can we come to terms with the fact on this programme yeah. that when somebody comes on, I do not answer questions. If you want my opinion, you must first of all tell me yours. My opinion, right. Uh, my opinion about uh, methadone being used to bring heroin addicts off, off heroin, well, I disagree with it. I was just wondering whether you do. Why do you disagree with it? Because I know, if, I know, well, a distant friend who's who's died from taking the methadone. Can we be rather more specific and say that your distant friend died from taking heroin? Yeah. It wasn't trying to get him off methadone that killed him. It uh, was the fact that he was on. Methadone, sorry, not heroin. Yes, but he was on heroin first. Yeah. Now your friend died initially because he was a heroin addict. Unfortunately, the methadone treatment didn't work, but your distant friend, relatives or whatever had no future, and the methadone was a chance to cure him. It failed, fine, but he wasn't going no place anyway. Okay. Oh. All right? Yeah. Cheers, thanks for your call. Tis melodic moment time. I'm feeling awfully melodic tonight, you know. Soggy, but melodic.